Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Today I want to talk to you about multi-material 3D printing. It seems nice and easy, just have a 3D printer that supports it and then press the button. But there's actually quite a bit more to it. So let's start off with what technologies are out there. There are two main different technologies. One is where you have multiple hot end and extruders side by side, so they're basically independent. And then you just have to filament one color feeding into one and coming out of one nozzle and the other filament going to a different hot end and coming out of a different nozzle. That's the technology that Ultimaker is using in their newest printer and many a bit older multi-material printer as well. One of the big advantages is that it's quite easy to build a printer with that technology as you just put multiple hot ends next to each other. You don't have to develop anything special. Now because they're next to each other though means that you lose some print area because the whole assembly gets bigger and you need more space. So your print area shrinks when you use more than one extruder. There's also a problem that the extruder that isn't in use is probably going to ooze out some material even if you retract. So either you just have these little oozes everywhere or you print with a print shield that makes a little layer around with a bit of distance that gets rid of most of the oozing. But you still might have some issues here and there. Another advantage is that you don't need a prime tower because the two hots and they don't change color. So you can just print and you don't waste much of material. I'm gonna go more into prime towers later. But the biggest difficulty with mostly cheaper printers like that is the alignment. Because you have two hot ends that need to be exactly on the same level, that's kind of difficult. Because when one is slightly further up, the other one's going to bump into what this printer just printed. So they need to be perfectly in line and like need to be somehow adjusted. So that is always the case. That's where many of the cheaper printers that use this technology fail. Of course, in Ultimaker's variant, that is no problem. But that printer costs many thousand dollars. The other main technology is having one hot end but multiple extruders. The biggest company in this field is Prusa with their multi-material upgrade to their i3. It's fairly new and this has the big advantage that you can do more than just two colors. The Prusa variant has up to four colors in the same thing. But basically the only thing limiting you with that technology is how many extruder motors you can control with your controller. Now the way that that works is you have still the multiple extruder motors in different places and then with a Bowden tube it's fed to the hot end where there's four inlets but only one nozzle where the material comes out. So there, it joins together somewhere in the middle. So while you're printing you constantly have to change the material in a way but the material is all waiting right there. So you retract the material you're printing with and then you go in with the new material and then what you have to do is prime the nozzle because it's still gonna have some of the old material in there. And that's where the prime tower comes in. That's basically just a little separate tower that it prints where it just every time the color gets switched it prints a bit of material so that there is none of the old one left. This of course means that you are wasting some material. And that's like the main disadvantage of this technology. But you also only have one hot end, so you don't have any problems with oozing, you don't have any problems with poor alignment or anything like that. This is also the technology that is used in the Zonestar C5 and if you want to see that review, stay tuned, it's going to be out really soon. And you can already check out the unboxing. Both of those you can check up, up here in the eye. Now that's for the technologies. Now let's talk about how you get the model onto the printer. You can't just have one model and then slice it with like a normal slicer. Because how is your slicer going to know which part of the model is going to be which color? So what you need to do if you want to print with two colors is you need to have two separate models that you then assemble inside of the slicer. Or if you have more colors than that, you need to have a separate model for every color. That means that the design process is a lot more difficult as you need to have multiple models and they still do need to fit together. So just designing the whole thing is quite a bit more difficult and there aren't as many models out there that you can use. 
Then once you're inside of the slice software, the, you don't have much choice. You either have the Prusa model and then you're using their dedicated software or basically with any other printer you're gonna use Cura, which is from Ultimaker. Of course, that works perfectly with their printer as it's designed for that. But if you have like a third party like the Zone Star C5, then you're gonna have a lot more trouble. Cause, well, the software is designed for multi-material. It's not designed for a single hot end. And even if you have multiple hot ends, it's probably not designed for the printer you're using. So setting all of that up is quite a bit more difficult as well. But the software is progressing a lot and the new versions of Cura have gotten a lot better. So we're still kind of in the early beginnings of multi-material printing being popular among the masses. But what is much easier to use is just having a different material for the support material. That's also one of the big selling points of the Ultimaker that you can have one hot end print out the support material, which is water dissolvable, and the other one print out whatever printing material you want. But I think the real fun part is printing different color models. So whatever printer you're using, you're gonna have to play around with the software a bit, and maybe it takes you a couple tries till you get to working. So that's basically the gist of it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, and I will make sure to answer them if I can. Also, make sure to leave a like on this video if you liked it and subscribe so you don't miss the review of the Zone Star Z5. I'm really impressed with that printer and I have a lot to say about it. So thanks for watching and until next time.